The Jesse Blake Sports Report with Jesse Blake. Welcome to the Jesse Blake Sports Report. Whether it is your first time here or your last time here or somewhere in between, I appreciate that you are here right now to discuss the bombshell news that the NHL world received today when it was announced that Shane Pinto will be suspended for 41 games, half an NHL season, for violating the NHL's gambling policy there's a lot of details to parse through here so let's get to it first of all shane pinto himself he was sitting out from the ottawa senators he was not under contract but he is not a ufa and he's not an rfa he's a special designation called a 10.2 player it's technically 10.2 bracket c player according to cap friendly and that means that he's not eligible to be offer sheeted you may be familiar with RFA designation where a player can be offer sheet and if they don't sign a contract by December 1st, they're not able to play the rest of the season. Shane Pendo is in this weird little area where he's a 10.2 player, meaning he's only eligible to sign a contract with the Ottawa Senators. And that contract was being negotiated throughout the summer, throughout the season, but the Ottawa Senators did not have the salary cap space to sign Shane Pinto. It was rumored that they were on the verge of signing him to a two-year deal, about two-something million dollars, and then he'd be able to play. And they were trying to make room to make that happen. But then this whole thing happened. This investigation into Shane Pinto violating the NHL's gambling policy. And it started during the summer. This investigation started during the summer after the NHL was alerted by one of their third-party gambling partners that Shane Pinto's account on one of these gambling platforms had mysterious activity. And I'll I'll spoil the end for you. We'll, we'll Quentin Tarantino this film and I'll give you the end right now. We don't know why Shane Pinto was suspended, but we do know that it is not for betting on hockey. We just don't know the details as to what he violated under the NHL gambling policy. We can draw conclusions based on, I'll read you some of the policy and all that, but we don't know what specifically he did to get suspended. So back to the investigation and the negotiation. So the investigation starts during the summer after the NHL is alerted that there's mysterious activity on one of Shane Pinto's accounts. Negotiations between Pierre Dorian and Shane Pinto's agent are then pulled back as the investigation progressed and got more serious in the last couple weeks. And that two-year deal that Shane Pinto was was being offered and that was on the table to bring him back to the Ottawa Senators was retracted. And now it looks like Shane Pinto will just accept whatever qualifying offer is given by the Ottawa Senators. And once his 41-game suspension is over, he'll be back in the organization full-time under this qualifying offer. And that two-year deal, it'll probably be a one-year deal for a million bucks. And that's all Shane Pindo's going to get. So the details of the suspension, there are plenty, and I'm going to do a lot of reading. This was the statement from the NHL upon the announcement of Shane Pinto's suspension. The National Hockey League announced today that it has suspended NHL player Shane Pinto for 41 games for activities related to sports wagering. The league's investigation found no evidence that Pinto made any wagers on NHL games. The NHL considers this matter closed, absent from the emergence of new information, and will have no further comment. So as you can see by the NHL statement, they did their due diligence. They found whatever evidence that they are not revealing to us, and they have decided to suspend Shane Pinto for 41 games. Shane Pinto is the NHL's first player to be suspended under the NHL's gambling policy. And if you look into the gambling policy, it reads that NHL Commissioner Gary Bettman is authorized to discipline individuals determined to have engaged in improper gambling activities in any or all of the following respects, expulsion or suspension or canceling of any contract that any individual may have uh, or imposing a fine. The league will act swiftly and aggressively in penalizing any club or club personnel determined to have engaged in acts in violation of the NHL gambling policy. We have a clear distinction that Shane Pinto did something that the NHL deems improper gambling activities. Those are... That is the universe that the NHL is allowed to suspend clubs or club personnel under. Shane Pinto violated that, and that is why he's suspended. So the Ottawa Senators also released a statement. They said, We were made aware of the National Hockey League investigation into this matter, 
and additional information was made available to the club upon the completion of the league's investigation yesterday. Shane is a valued member of our hockey club, an engaging, intelligent young man who made poor decisions that have resulted in a suspension by the National Hockey League. We know he is remorseful for his mistakes. The Ottawa Senators fully support the NHL's rules on gambling. While saddened to learn of this issue, the entire organization remains committed to Shane and will work together to do what is necessary to help provide the support to allow him to address his issues and become a strong contributor to our community. When the time is right and with the league's blessing, we will welcome him back to the organization and embrace him as one of our own. Right there, there's a lot in that statement. And I thought that statement was one of the bigger things to come out of today because right, right there you have the entire Ottawa Senators, but specifically Pierre Dorian, the GM, the guy who's making the player personnel decisions, fully backing Shane Pinto, a player who is not under a contract that allows him to play in the NHL and saying, we're going to get through this. We're going to have him here. He's a great player. We think he made a mistake and that he's going to be a part of this organization going forward. We're going to figure out the contract. And when he's eligible to come back after 41 games and the suspension is retroactive to game one. So that means Shane Pinto will be eligible to play January 21st against the Philadelphia Flyers. They're going to welcome him back with open arms, which is as a fan. Great to hear if you're a Sens fan. Shane Pinto also released his statement and he said, I want to apologize to the National Hockey League, the Ottawa Senators, my teammates, the fans and city of Ottawa, and most importantly, my family. I take full responsibility for my actions and look forward to getting back on the ice with my team. Shane Pinto and the National Hockey League all seem to be saying the same thing in that it is a closed issue. The investigation is over. We know what happened and now we all got to move on. But like the NHL insiders aren't going to let that go. And hopefully we get a little bit more information as time goes on from the, the bigger guys who do the dirty work to get some more info on what exactly went on here. Because we know it was not gambling on sports, but we know it was something untoward with his gambling account. And if you're wondering, hey, how does the league know this? Or how are these betting companies like, how did they reveal this information to the NHL and and how did this happen? These gambling companies, they're allowed to talk about these players. And we know that through players being caught through the NFL's gambling policy. So there's a fantastic article on ESPN.com that was written back in June called Inside the NFL's Gambling Policy and Uptick in Violations by David Purdom. And David outlines how there are third-party companies who can track gambling habits, geolocation data, and everything about your personal information on these gambling accounts so that they can alert untoward activities. And they have partnerships with the NFL and the MLB and the NBA to let them know, hey, X player is gambling at X facility, which is against our rules. X player has bet on X game, which they are not allowed to do. And when these players sign up for these accounts, they are agreeing that they can be tracked, that these third-party companies are privy to their information. And if they break the rules, these third-party companies will alert the league. So what we have here is one of the third-party companies. We don't know if it's a gambling partner directly or a third-party company that's involved in keeping in making sure that players do not violate policies. But one of them identified something strange and told the NHL. And that's how NFL players who make bets in locker rooms, they are not allowed to do that. Their phone's being geolocated and tracked by these companies. And it's it's a it's a lesson in privacy. Like you, all of your information is being stored on a database and is being tracked at all times. So that's just a little thing to keep in mind as well as you move forward. If you are a gambler yourself, they're keeping an eye on you. You might not be a professional athlete, but they know what you're doing. It'll be interesting to see, as I mentioned, how this story grows and unfolds. It's so fresh right now and. I think Shane Pinto is going to be a great player in the long term for the Ottawa Senators, and I'm happy that they are supporting him through this. And he's going to play at some point this season. And what is it going to be like when he hits the ice? What's that side of this story going to be like? And it's going to be one that's not done today. This is going to keep growing and keep expanding. And before I go today, that is all for the Shane Pinto news. But before I go, uh, there was some other breaking news from another Hockey League. This one, the PWHL, the Professional Women's Hockey League, which will get going in January. We don't know the team names yet. We know the cities, but we don't know what they will be called. And it looks like Haley Salvian did the work here and discovered that 
These might be the team names. Haley Salvian tweeted, potential PWHL team names have been revealed. Applications for Toronto Torch, Montreal Echo, Ottawa Alert, Minnesota Superior, Boston Wicked, and New York Sound were filed by PWHL Holdings LLC on Wednesday. On initial reading, I'm a little underwhelmed. I have not read the background on the names on why they could be important to each market. I have to do my research on that. But on initial reading of the tweet, uh, uh, there's more to be desired is what I'll say. What are your thoughts on the PWHL names? What are your thoughts on the Shane Pinto news that we received today? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this, hit like, hit subscribe. If you're listening, give it a rating on your podcast feed. Hopefully it's five stars. I'd appreciate that. And thank you for being here today. You could have been anywhere in the world. It shows be listening or watching this podcast right now. And I appreciate you. I'll be back on Sunday night. As always, good night from and Toronto. That is how it's done. The Jesse Blake Sports Report with Jesse Blake. Jesse Blake, the guy that likes to hear his name twice in one sentence. Sure, I know him. No, he doesn't have an ego at all.